Well, it's that time of year again when we celebrate the anniversary of the Goslar Precedence Dispute, also known as the Bloody Pentecost of Goslar. Or at least we probably should do, but I don't suppose very many people have ever heard of it, which is a great pity. It happened on the 7th of June 1063, at a time when bloodshed was a very common way of settling disputes, even in church. This one happened in Goslar's old collegiate church and began as an argument over seating arrangements, but escalated into a riot that left several people dead. Which does sound like something the Klingons might have done in a rejected episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine, but that's the Middle Ages for you. The two names you need to know are Widerhardt of Eppenstein and Hitzilo of Hildesheim. And those two had clashed before, the previous Christmas in fact, over exactly the same issue, seating arrangements. In those days, the higher your rank or position, the closer you were allowed to sit to the highest ranking person. And this caused a problem during Vespers at Christmas 1062, which was presided over by the Archbishop of Mainz. Who had the right to sit next to him? Widerhardt thought he did. He was abbot of Fulda Monastery and reckoned that that meant he had a special relationship with Mainz. After all, the monastery was founded by Saint Boniface himself, the first Archbishop of Mainz, and it had all sorts of privileges and rights. Hetzelow disagreed. He was Bishop of Hildesheim and his argument was very simple. No bishop could be outranked by a mere abbot, especially in his own diocese. And so the two men started punching each other, which must have been quite a sight. Monty Python couldn't have done it better. On this occasion, the Duke of Bavaria managed to separate them and declared that Abbot Widerhardt could take the more privileged seat. Yes, this really did happen. A duke really did break up a fight between an abbot and a bishop. And so we come to the bloody Pentecost of 1063, when the same argument happened again. Now, the primary source that we have for this is a historian called Lampert of Hersfeld, who just happened to be there at the time. But modern historians think that he was biased in favour of Abbot Widerath, and so some of what he says may need to be taken with a pinch of salt. He claims that Bishop Hetzelow hid some armed men behind the altar. When the fighting started, they came out of hiding and drove out everybody who supported the abbot. But they grabbed some swords and ran back into the church, and then things got really nasty. This was, remember, in the middle of a church service. The chanting of monks was replaced by the sounds of battle, and Lampert describes rivers of blood everywhere. In the middle of it all was the future Holy Roman Emperor, King Henry IV, who at the time was only 13 years old. As you might expect from a 13-year-old, he stood there waving his arms, yelling at everybody to stop fighting, but nobody was listening. Eventually, his people managed to persuade him to just get out! Again, the abbot supporters were driven out of the church, and this time they lay siege to it. It was evening before the siege was lifted. Lampert doesn't say exactly how many people died, but it was a lot. Later, the church had to be reconsecrated. The official investigation found Abbot Widerath guilty of, well, everything, which is why historians think that the account given by Lampert might have been biased. According to the investigation, the abbot had planned the whole thing from the very beginning. He saved himself from impeachment by paying what was basically a massive fine, almost bankrupting his own monastery in the process. Sadly, the church no longer exists. It was dismantled in the 19th century, leaving only the porch. But you can still stand on the spot where untold numbers of people died because two grown men argued over a seat. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to send me a postcard, here's the address. And don't forget to visit my website and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Also, if you'd like access to special bonus content and help with the costs of running this channel, please consider making a small monthly donation on Patreon.